Hey, I'm Chelsea, and today I'll be giving you a tour of my Animal Crossing island. I am really excited to be sharing this with you, but also a little bit nervous. My island feels very personal to me, but I love watching people's Animal Crossing island tours and getting to see how people's creativity really shines in this game. I don't see myself as being the most creative designer, but I have put in a lot of time into creating and making and designing and rearranging and tearing Terraforming. Now that this channel is new, I felt like it was kind of a rite of passage for me to make some type of Animal Crossing video. This is also kind of a time capsule of my journey playing Animal Crossing. Some of the areas on my island were made in the beginning when I was just getting started and they have remained that way. And in preparation of this video, I wanted to finish my island so I could upload it to a dream address and so they're new to me too and are a better reflection, I think, of the things that inspire me about Animal Crossing now. So I really hope you like it or not. That's literally okay. You don't have to like it, but I'm just excited to get to share this with you. So let's go. I wanted to start the tour off at the airport. If you were to visit my island from the dream address, you would be at the community center first, but I really like my island entrance, so I wanted to start here. And before we get started and head towards all of the madness that is back there, let's check out my map. So here's my house, and then I have a second character who I've named Haku. I have Drago, Tia, Flurry, Antonio, Maddie, Anka, Octavian, Zell, Whitney, and Pecan. Fun fact, I think Drago and Tia were both my first five villagers and I just really loved them. This was before the 2.0 update, this was before Happy Home Paradise, and I really loved their personalities. I just didn't like their houses, you know, when they came with the generic houses, not their character's house. And I thought a long time of like, oh, am I going to, you know, if they decide to leave, am I going to kick them off? Or am I going to, you know, try to get them back if I manage to do that? But I'm glad I just kept them on the island because then I was able to customize their houses and I have customized every single house on this island. So I will try to include clips of all of them because I'm very proud of them. So here's just the general layout of my island. I have two villager communities. My able sisters and shop are right next to each other. And then everything's kind of towards the front versus the residents are in the back. So let's get started. Okay. So I've set my island to be springtime. I just thought it was really beautiful. And here's the entrance. As you can see, we are surrounded by the tanuki statues, the raccoon dog statues. I just thought they were really funny looking and a little bit creepy, but they are kind of like the guardians that watch over and make sure that none of the bad spirits come into my island. Let me get a better view. Yeah, a little bit weird, but I love them. All right, this was like kind of an early build for me. I really loved like the very dramatic entrance with the waterfalls and all of the gold roses. And so I just kept it. <laughs> and then we will cross over this bridge and we enter kind of the community. <gasps> Drago, what are you thinking about? And also with you. Okay, and so yeah, if we head here to the left, we would get to the community center. My flag, my island flag, is a Paupu fruit from Kingdom Hearts. Okay, so if we continue down this pathway, we will get to my little shopping district. So here I have the shop, Nook's Cranny, and the Abel Sister shop. And this is just like a little pavilion. I imagine it kind of to be like a, like a European Parisian street where there are just tables about and people are having their coffees for the day and just chatting. I also put an ABD and a storage shed out here. That way, anytime I need to buy something in the shop or drop something off, it is just really easy access for me. I'm gonna head back up this way. We'll come down here. Some more flowers, a spiller, and this first beach is my carnival. My little boardwalk pier carnival. Oh, 
it. I just love it. It's really cute. Having the big inflatable elephant on right on the shore. I just imagine that she's, you know, dipping her feet in the water. I head this way. And here is my flower garden. I am very proud to say that I personally grew every one of these flowers, including the blue roses. It was truly a labor of love. This took me like a solid 30, 40 days of real days. I wasn't time traveling at all. I was just playing every day. Every day to wake up and to not get a blue rose really just tore at my heart. It was not, it was not really fun. I really love it. And it would ju it's just easier now to like find a flower and stick it in an area and then get to duplicate it. Much easier once I have all the flowers in one place. Here we have this little fountain plaza with my money trees. And let's head off this way just to see what's on this beach. SpongeBob and Patrick, of course. They are my faves. This beach is not very decorated, but I do have just little tables and chairs with fruity drinks on them, in case anybody wanted to relax. We run up this way. I have some of my turtle friends, a little telescope, my first lighthouse, I'm a little bit obsessed. And then I have some of Gulliver's items here, just all the pirate items. I just think they're really fun and cute. <laughs> all right, so we'll cut back through here. Again, this little picnic area, a vending machine, and we'll head up into my first villager cluster. Oh, Octavian's home. All right, so I themed his house because he's like that grumpy personality. I just imagined him having a cabin that like had very little electronics which is like in the middle of the woods he's here for like a writing retreat to get away from the world so this is what i imagine it to be like like it's this part-time like summer cabin so most of the year it's empty and is very sparse um but when he's here he's really living up his life i also like to make my houses functional functional <laughs> for their character so I always try to include a kitchen um, of course their bed and and to make everything like accessible through walking so there's at least like two spaces between everything so you can walk around and interact with stuff all right cool we'll head this way this is Flurry's house my newest villager is Maddie I just finished designing her house. I actually just found her too. Really great. This is Pecan and Zell. We'll go ahead and pop into their houses too. But before we do, I wanted to note that I've hidden the gnomes. There's seven of them. I think they're themed after the seven dwarves from Snow White, but I have hidden them around my island. So in case you visit, maybe you can find all of them. But let's go into Pecan's house. Pecan? 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 Pecan. It's Pecan. Ooh, she's working out. So her house is very chic. I really wanted to do something with this blue wallpaper. I thought it was so cool and elegant and theme everything around it. So I got to use like the blue fabric on the rattan bed and she has a little clothing rack where she can display all of her newest items. She gets to use like the Art Deco coffee table, which is really hard to style because you can only change the leg colors. And I feel like it's hard to incorporate blue into like a more modern aesthetic. But I really love this one. I, it was really out of my comfort zone to be so blue focused. It's not really a color that I gravitate towards. All right, let's go over to Zell's house. Ooh, he's crafting something. Thank you, Zell. <laughs> and also with you. Zell is definitely the cool guy and so I needed to give him the city bachelor pad high-rise sky rise apartment so I got to use the uh, night cityscape wall 
gave him a really cool kitchen, but I also wanted him to just have this billiards table and actually be able to walk all the way around it. It took up a lot of space, but I really like it. It's really moody in here. All right. Bye, Zell. Cool. Okay, yay, Flurry Zone. Oh, this is Flurry's house. So I themed her house to be cream and blue themed. A little bit wintry. She's always in this really cute sweater, so I thought that it was just really cool to give her like some sewing supplies and like an old alarm clock. <laughs> oh, it's so cute in here. This piece of art that is winter and snow themed. The cutest thing. Lots of embroidery and tapestry, like handcrafted things. Oh, such a cute house. Okay. Okay, Maddie's home, yay! So this is the house I just finished designing. I imagine that Maddie, because she is the preppy personality, that she would be a YouTuber or a vlogger or a streamer of some sign. She obviously has a camera with a tripod on it. She has a laptop so she can edit her videos or send them to her editor if she has one. I kind of wish I had one, to be honest. <laughs> I also imagine this to be like a like a tween to teenage girl's bedroom too so she still has her plushies because she can't let them go but she's also like not ashamed to have them like plushies are great and cute and adorable but she also reads magazines and she has a cute kitchen but she doesn't really cook so she doesn't really use it it's just not very well stocked she doesn't even have a fridge and of course, like a little sink and vanity area and a place to do her laundry. But this space is mostly for sitting and vlogging with her cute little setup. Okay. <laughs> but let's move on to the top level of my island, which is my residence. So I lied. This is actually uh, my second character's residence. I have it blocked off because it's not finished being designed yet, but it's still here and it's still beautiful, a chic, a little bit mysterious. Over on this side is my Force Perspective lighthouse. And I remember when this concept first came out and it was just such a cool idea to put the lighthouse back there. And then I got the little cars from linking with Animal Crossing Pocket Camp, the mobile game. And I, I really love it. I just think it's so cute. And this is also the area where I will go stargazing if there's a meteor shower. I have very fond memories of inviting my friends over and we took pictures in this location. It was just really special when we were just trying to like farm everything about the game. All right. And then this is my gyroid garden. This is not my idea. I originally saw this in a list the last video, but she got this idea from another creator and I just thought it was so cute. It was really fun to look for all the gyroids. I am unfortunately still missing two of them. I just haven't been able to get them organically, but I just like sitting here listening to stale cupcakes and watching the gyroids just sing along. They're so cute. This was a really weird spot, so I actually have two seating areas for this. But... It's so peaceful. All right, let's keep going. We come down this way. And we are at my house. Oh, hi, Maddie. I themed the entrance of my house to be like a Japanese garden. So very open, but still having lots of nature in intentional places, the rock garden with the sand designs. And this area is actually themed from a temple that I visited while I was living in Japan. They had the red bridge that led to an altar where you could pray and donate money. And I wanted to include it somewhere on my island. And then I have the two tori gates here as well. If we head this direction, this is actually leading to my secret beach. Here we go. So yep, yeah, this is just my little, little pirate cove for my pirate who is trying to sell us illegal artworks, counterfeit art. 
Okay, now that we're here, let's go inside my house. So welcome to my house. I'm really, really, really proud of how this house turned out. It is so, it feels super cozy to me. It is very full. I like to design houses that are kind of maximalist. So there has to be things on the walls, but I try to make it still feel balanced. And the colors that I'm leaning into for my house are wood tones and yellows. So, oh no. No, please don't come in. <laughs> All right, well, you can be here, Flurry, I guess. I wanted to come into your house anyways. This is my house. I'm really proud of it. It's really cozy. I always like to include, in my personal house, I've always included a kotatsu because it is just the coziest thing. And while I was living in Japan, my apartment had a kotatsu and I just loved sitting there and doing everything. Oh, see you later. That was probably the shortest visit I've ever had. Probably because I didn't say anything. Kotatsus, I loved having a kotatsu, especially in the winter time. It was a really great way to save money and not turn on the heater because I could just turn the heater on underneath the table and sit under the blanket and be nice and toasty. And I would literally do everything there. I would do things on my laptop. I would watch shows. I would do my nails, which is why there's a little nail kit there. And obviously you need to have the stack of floor pillows. So in case anybody comes over, they have a place to sit on the floor. But I also have a couch with a TV because I'm not a monster. All right, so let's head into this back room. This back room is my bedroom. Very cozy. Again, continuing with a very yellow theme lots of art and things on the walls. And I love a good board game, so I had to have a little board game spot. And also a bookshelf. This is also functional for me because this is the only wardrobe I think I have in my house. So if I want to change my appearance or change my clothes, it's I can literally just run into my bedroom and do that. All right, let's head back out. Okay, let's head to the right. Welcome to my kitchen. Continuing with the yellow theme, yellow appliances. And I tried to use a lot of the fruit themed items. So we have the cherry speaker in the corner. I think, let's see. I think up on the wall I have, yes, I have the orange clock. And a lot of art on the wall still, lots of plants and also lots of baked goods. I really enjoy baking in my personal time. I just have to have baked goods in my house, like freshly baked bread and scones and pancakes and crepes and of course a sand mixer and a rice cooker because rice is life. All right. Running over to the left. Here is my office slash playroom, my relaxation room, my gaming room. It's like kind of my gaming room. So I have a little cushion here. The wall on this side is my manga bookshelf. So again, another place to just sit and read and be cozy. But I also have my snack corner over here with a mini fridge and snack shelves because snacks always. And then my little arcade corner with the pinball machine, gotcha machine and the claw machines. And of course my gaming desk and gaming setup. I was also able to get the Sanrio Amiibo cards and I'm using a lot of the pom pom pudding items as well as like the Hello Kitty and Karopi posters too. They're just, they're just really cute. Oh, I even have the pom pom pudding TV up here, which I just think is so funny looking. Like in the Barbie movie, they highlighted that Barbie used to have a TV in her back. Like this is what that reminds me of. It, it's just so funny. <laughs> Of course, gotta have my Animal Crossing theme switch. I actually don't have this in real life. I thought of all about if I would want it, but having a second switch kind of feels excessive to me right now, but who knows, I'll change my mind. The Switch 2 is coming out soon, so. All right, now we'll go upstairs. So this is my bathroom and it is themed off of a Japanese onsen or a Japanese hot spring. While I was living in Japan, I really loved going to onsens and really got into the culture of it. 
so I wanted to basically have a whole room that was <laughs> an onsen so on the left side here is the area where I would assume you would walk into it is the changing area there's a sink for you to like wash up and blow dry your hair a toilet of course a yukata sitting or like hanging on the wall then the center section is the washing area so before you enter the baths because it's a public bath you need to bathe first so that you are clean before entering the water so this is just the area for you to shower off wash your hair and then you would head to the outdoor area with the two different baths and look out onto the beautiful scenery i really miss Going to the onsen, especially in the winter time, it's really nice when the air is cold and dry and you go inside the onsen and it's nice and steamy. I put two baths here because typically if there are multiple baths on an onsen, they are at a different temperatures. Well, the water is always hot, but usually there's a hot and then a really hot temperature or sometimes it's like if there's even more baths than that, they'll have like a cold bath that you can oscillate between, like jump into the hot water bath for a couple minutes and then jump into the cold water bath and it is just supposed to be really good for your health but it's also just a really nice experience so i i really wanted to have an onsen <laughs> and last but not least is my basement which is my gaming and theater room so i kind of treat this like a movie theater so on this side of course we have our projector screen with the really nice comfy wide seats and the popcorn trays of course and then on this side we have the little snack bar again. As you can see, I love snacks. I need them to be well stocked and in every room. And then I have a little board game station. I also am a big fan of board games. I had one in the bedroom of this house and I just wanna have friends over and do game nights and play board games with them and be stressed out. <laughs> because it's in the basement, I really wanted to have it be orange, but a little bit like warmer tone. So this room is more orangey. I liked the collage of KK albums that are orange, some more orange lights, and kind of yellow being the accent color instead of the primary color. I imagine that poster of Jack is like a movie poster. I haven't caught all of the bugs and fish yet, but once I do and get those posters, they will be going up in here. But for now, it's just the fossils. All right, so that was my house tour and we should continue on with the rest of the island while the weather is still nice. So we're actually going to not go down these stairs yet and go across this way. Maddie, please, please. Okay, cool. This is just a little bamboo garden with all of the bamboo trees with wishes on them. I also wanted my island to be fully functional for me to be able to catch everything. This pond here is actually a second story river so that I can catch the fish that you can only catch on like the higher island tiers. So this actually just leads down into, I don't know if we can see it, uh, nope, but just this little <laughs> opening at the bottom is leading to a waterfall so this technically counts as a river so i can actually catch all the fish on my island and not have to use nook mile tickets to go to mystery islands and the little tanuki statue hiding out back there so we've now entered my second villager area but first we'll head up to my campsite i'm really proud of this campsite too it feels really rugged to me but also still very well stocked because there are tents and sleeping bags and there's a picnic basket on this table and a board game of course because what else are you going to do at a campsite this is also where my rock garden is it was just nice to have all of my rocks in one place and also surround them with more rocks all right and now here is the second villager area okay let's go see this is tia's house so a lot of the normal villagers, Tia has a normal personality. They kind of come up as like grandmas to me. And so I kind of gave her a old school, like grandma chic house. So the little reading nook surrounded by bookshelves, which I, that is my dream. I would love to have that. Uh, not even like a real kitchen, like literally a stove, like a brick oven as the kitchen. The old like antique wooden furniture, 
a very proper like tea set and like tiered cake stand, all of the old art and uh, it's just really, it's really lovely. I love it. I love making my characters into grandmas. <laughs> all right, cool. And now we'll head down this way. Let's see who else is home. Okay, cool. So Anka is home. Anka has more of her traditional Japanese old house. So she has the area to display things. And then over on this side, so she sleeps on a futon, doesn't have a real bed, has a kutatsu, of course, but has like a nice, a pretty large kitchen, I would say. Like this whole area is dedicated to being a kitchen. And of course, this heater for warmth because Japanese houses, especially old ones, are not very well insulated. So you need all the help you can get. I know this isn't really Anka's personal style because her theming was Egyptian, but I just think it's adorable. We have time skipped to the late afternoon. Hopefully more of my villagers will be home so I can show you the inside of their houses. Drago's not home. <laughs> oh, but Whitney is, okay. Ooh, and she's crafting. No, that means we don't get to see the house in its glory. This is a shame. We'll try again later. <laughs> She's still crafting! <laughs> she knows it! Oh my god! Whitney, we just want to tour your cute, chic, Brooklyn apartment. Like, come on, without you crafting, you know? There's so much to ask for. Oh yay! Okay, so this is Whitney's house. Whitney has that very chic, posh personality, and so I wanted to give her a chic, posh apartment. This is definitely one of the designs I had the hardest time doing. Like I, I had a hard time envisioning something for Whitney and then executing on it. I wanted a modern blue themed, but wasn't as blue as like Pecan's house. Still chic, they have the same personality type. So I just wanted a different version of that. Like maybe like a sister design of that. So this is what I came up with. It's a little bit more bare, a little bit more empty. She kind of leans into a more minimalistic aesthetic. Everything has a purpose, everything brings her joy, but that kind of fits Whitney's vibe anyways. Okay, I'm glad we got to see it for real. But where, my guy? <gasps> yes, Drago. We have made it inside Drago's house. And he's crafting! I'm really upset because this corner of his house is really cute. And if he's crafting, that means we don't get to see it. Okie dokie, Drago is home. Let's hope he's not crafting. If he was cooking, that would be fine because he has a kitchen. Yay, okay, cool. So we made it into Drago's house and I think Drago's house is one of my all time favorites. It was, I think, one of the first ones I redesigned too. I said this in the beginning, but Drago was one of my original five villagers and I loved his lazy personality. He was such a goob to me, but his house was just the generic wood house and it was just so sad to look at every time I walked in, especially when you compare it to his default house like this house designed for him when 2.0 came out and the happy home paradise dlc came out getting to redesign our villagers houses i this was the first one that i did and i love it a lot he has a little cricket in the corner as a buddy because he loves the bugs but he is a lazy villager so he has a kotatsu covered in snacks and a switch and a puzzle on the floor lots of pillows but he also you know has a little bed and a bug model and as a lazy villager, he is always talking about food and cooking. So I had to give him a little kitchen that is usable. And I just imagined him like sitting here on the floor and playing his switch and just hanging out. And he's singing. 
But again, leaning into an old Japanese house would look like with the tatami on the floor, lots of bamboo everywhere, greens, typical Japanese furniture. It's really nice. Okay, let's go visit Antonio. <laughs> Why are these people so averse to being in their houses? I designed them and spent all this time making them really cute and then they just don't want to be there when I want to be there. Oh, Antonio's using his kitchen. Uh, Antonio is an anteater. I wanted an anteater on my island because my university's mascot was an anteater, it was that's that. And he's also a jock, the only jock on my island. So I had to give him a home gym because he needs a place to do all of his pull-ups, you know? He really needs to get those back gains. And yeah, I just think of it kind of like a boy apartment. <laughs> Very uh, functional, a little bit messy, but hey, it has all the things that you need, you know? Got the yoga mat, got the protein powder, of course. But yes, this is his his very serene apartment. I think it's really cute, <laughs> like every other house I make. <laughs> so let's head down this path. So as you can see on the right side, I have my little library, outdoor library. Unfortunately, you can't get in here to sit, but it's the thought that counts, you know? And then on the left, I have this pond garden. I have the Kuropi lantern sitting in the water and this is also the diagonal if you were to fly to my island this is what you would see. So very quaint, cute. Here's another lantern and we'll keep heading down the path. Down here is my plant nursery kind of a little plant shop where you could pick up some plants. I love having plants in my decor and putting them in villager houses. And then the train cars. This might be one of my oldest builds. Once I collected all four of them, and this was before the 2.0 update where you could get any of the versions from Brees. I was just so excited that I actually managed to get all four of these that I put them on display right away. I just had to. <laughs> We keep going down, there's some bistro tables as well as my bakery. I love that the 2.0 update came with all of the different food and cooking and I just, I honestly snack bread is my favorite. Like who thought about putting little smiley faces on those little guys? They're adorable. <laughs> and finally we have my ceramic studio. I just thought it was cute. There are so many different like clay things like this little dino that you could make. So I just felt compelled to include a ceramic studio and play with clay. Here we have my neon beach. Again, this is a very old build before you could get every customization if you had one of the items. So the fact that I was able to, well, the palm tree lamp is a craftable item, but the ice cream cone lamps and the diner neon signs, oh, I, I like really did lots of catalog parties with my friends to be able to get all these items. And I just think it's really funky and cool. <laughs> we'll go ahead and check out the, we'll go back up and check out the rest of this beach. So I have some of the space items here, like the UFO. And a volleyball net just to fill up the space. And then out over there, I have some more of the space things and another lighthouse because again I am obsessed. I don't know what these flowers are called I forgot but um, I just wanted a place to put all of them for getting a five-star island. And then here in the back is my iridescent shell little cove. I just thought it was really cute and I wanted to put these items out on display. Plus I had the weird peninsula that was so close to this little narrow strip of beach that it was a very small area to decorate anyways. All right. So we'll head back down the path. And head to the left. And this is my museum. I themed my museum area. 
I had seen pictures of people doing like a sunken area of a museum but I didn't have enough space to like build up cliffs and instead I decided to theme it based off of the museums that I like visiting here in SoCal so there's LACMA and the Getty and they just have these really interesting plazas that lead up into the museum itself so I wanted this nice flat open space and in the front of the museum I have this pool of art some of it is like Gulliver's gifts once you save him, but some of it's also just like the failed fake art <laughs> that you get from Red. I bought them and I still wanted to display them, so I figured why not put it here since I already spent the money. And then here on this, my last beach, I have some more art that just was not able to get donated as well as some food because I have just a cute little eating area right here on the beach and I know this logically doesn't make any sense to like like to have kotatsus on the beach like covered in sand but I just thought it was really really quaint and cute and it would be a very unique experience to have I've never seen this in real life though okay and we're almost back to the front of my island, but we have a couple more areas to go visit. So if we head this way, this bridge heads back to the airport, and then we're back at the community center. And we'll head back up this way, cross over this bridge, and we'll head this way first. So this is my farm. Uh, it's a very big farm. I actually don't need this much produce, but I themed it based off of the views that I saw while I was living in Japan. I lived out in the countryside where the primary form of work was agriculture, and this is what the farms looked like. They were usually placed in valleys because it was still quite a mountainous area, and they were just irrigation lines and these nice, like, flat farms. Over on this side is another outdoor onsen. I could not help myself and I also just finished this build. I had this big open space that was this awkward triangular shape and I didn't know what to do with it so I put another onsen here. But I think it came out really well and I think it's an example of how my style has changed and I'm trying to make my outdoor designs more organic looking, a lot more layered with different trees at different growth stages, even just a combination of normal trees and pine trees and bamboo. I am really proud of this build too. It feels very wild. But if we head up this diagonal path, we'll head back to this villager area. And if we head this way, up the big path then we'll also get to the double staircase leading back to my house but there's actually one more area that i haven't shown you yet and it's kind of a secret i think if you were running around you wouldn't think that you could get to this area so let's head over there now from the community center if we headed this way there's behind the shops there is this path with trees fruit trees and if you head just behind the trees, you would get to my secret pink garden. I just really wanted to play again with terraforming and play with all of the beautiful pink flowers that there are and also get to have a place to put this giant pink panda because hello, it is freaking cute. And I have a moon up there, it's so cool. It's really nice in nighttime to just watch it. It's glowing and rotating. But there's actually a continuation if you can see, so we're gonna head up and finish the video over there. Starting from my house, if you head to the left and in front of the gyroid garden, you will get to the other entrance of the second level of this garden, which is this little cute picnic area. And I just think it's so adorable here. And that is the end of this Animal Crossing tour. I really hope you enjoyed running around with me and following me across my island. Again, I'm just really proud of all of the work that I've done on this island. And I can confidently say for the first time since starting this game that my island is finished. 
I have decorated everything in every area that I've wanted to. It really feels like a weight lifted off my shoulders to say that my island is finished. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in another video. Bye!